Hello everyone, the tank is uh, 44 month old. I'm gonna tell you about a couple of small changes in terms of uh, how I set up the tank. And I'm gonna tell you about a near miss story. I, I almost wiped up my tank uh, because I did something really, really stupid. So uh, stay tuned and uh, you'll find out more. Hello and welcome back everyone. The tank is uh, 44 month old, well almost 44 month old. Uh, things are mostly going well. Uh, first I'll show you a couple of uh, small changes that I'm making to the tank and then I, I'm gonna tell you about a, a story that hopefully you'll learn from my mistake because I almost, almost wiped out this tank and uh, then we're gonna do a SPS tour. So uh, let's get going. So the first thing that I'm doing different is, uh, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but uh, I've moved my gyres or gearies. Uh, I'm, I'm sure somebody's gonna correct my pronunciation, but uh, I had these two X, uh, I forgot what they call, but the, they're the gyre 230s. I had them on the back and my MP10s were on the side here. And I got several like tips from uh, um, viewers of this channel that it, it might, actually the flow might be better if I move the gyres here and have them blow water across and have the MP tents moving water from the back of the tank to the front. So I was cleaning my uh, power heads uh, several, uh, about maybe six, six weeks ago. And then I decided to try out this layout. So I put the gyres on here facing each other and I now have them running on alternate gyre or alternate gyre mode where essentially they alternate power. So this thing goes from 30% to 70% and the opposite gyre is is on an alternate cycle so when the right gyre is at 70 percent this is 30 percent and vice versa and then the, i moved the mp10s in the back and uh, they're running on the reef crest which is the random mode uh, with the maximum intensity of about 80 percent so on average both of these guys are running around well if, okay if the maximum is 80 percent on an average they're running about 40 percent each and I got—I got to tell you, I—I I actually really like this flow pattern. Uh, one thing that I've been noticing b before I did the switch was I would like at the end of the day I would get like little bits of crud uh, accumulating on the corner of the rocks here, and the rocks on the sand uh, here and there. Uh, but ever since I switched this, I'm essentially seeing no evidence of. I—I uh, I don't know what they were. Maybe dinos. Uh, I don't think they were dinos, but they. I think maybe there were cyano or some diatoms or something. But anyway, ever since I did this shift, uh, I find that there is way more flow in my tank and I'm not seeing any accumulation of detritus in the corner. So I think overall that's been a, a really positive change. Okay, the other change that I did, uh, we have to peek in the hood, peek under the hood, is Actually, there's kind of two changes here. So the first change is that uh, I had a FOS band reactor connected to this outlet here and it was running carbon and I just got rid of it. Um, and now I have carbon uh, in a baggie over there. The reason that I got rid of that is I, I'm, I'm starting to use my, uh, uh, I'm starting to do mechanical filtration again. Uh, so before I had no socks and I did it mostly out of laziness and uh, so it's one part laziness the other part is that every time I have to remove the socks the FOS band reactor was on the way and it's just it, it it was a lot of like unnecessary taking things out and and in and so I got rid of the FOS band so now I'm able to uh, move uh, slide in the, um, the filter holders a lot easier and the reason that I did that is I was just getting a lot of like nasty accumulation and detritus in the bottom of the sump here and I'm finding that it was it was like harder to clean up uh, so it would just accumulate and accumulate and accumulate and I would clean it up once every six months but it took me a lot to kind of clean it up so now with the socks I'm essentially able to uh, not have so much buildup of detritus and now that I don't have anything blocking the way, I could just slide these guys in and out uh, without, uh, without problems. 
Yeah, so that was uh, another kind of major change. Well, minor change in the tank is I'm now running filter socks again, and I no longer have a phosphate reactor. I'm still running carbon. It's in a baggie. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but it's a baggie of carbon right there. Uh, everything else is uh, uh, s still the same. I'm still dosing uh, two-part ESV. Uh, there, this is my dose. Uh, it's controlled by the Trident. The Trident so far has been doing really, a really good job of monitoring alkalinity. Uh, some of the calcium reading and the magnesium reading, when you come uh, here, let me just show you. The Trident is mounted right here. And so it's been, I think it's been doing a really good job. I mean, I, I have it automatically dosing my alkalinity. So it tests alkalinity six times a day and it adjusts the, the two part dosing accordingly. Uh, I had no issues with its alkalinity reading. Sometimes when the reagents are almost at an end, the calcium and the magnesium values are all over the place, but I don't typically worry about that. So I, I just focus everything on the alkalinity. And so far this thing has been doing a really good job at monitoring alkalinity. All right, bye-bye Trident. All right, what else happened? Uh, so uh, yeah, let me tell you about the near disaster. <laughs> wow, that was, uh, that was a bonehead move. Okay, so where do I start? Okay, in the, I'm doing automatic dosing here. Uh, sorry, not automatic dosing, automatic water changes. So there is this tube here that is taking water, dirty water from the tank uh, via a dose downstairs. And then I have another line there. I guess it's a little bit hard to see, but this blue line here, that's bringing in fresh water from a saltwater reservoir downstairs uh, and pumping it up here. So this, this system has been great and it's kind of running off of a dose that looks exactly like this, but it's in the basement down, uh, underneath the tank. So everything was going great last, uh, maybe last weekend or two weekends ago, uh, my saltwater reservoir has been looking really, really yucky. And what I wanted to do is essentially just clean it. So I, I took the saltwater reservoir and I cleaned, I dumped, well, I mean, it, I had already used up all the salt water. So I put in some fresh water and some vinegar in there. And then the actual line that is bringing uh, salt water in from uh, in the tank from downstairs uh, that line looked a really uh, a little bit yucky it had build up of like bacteria or, or stuff on it it just looked really gross so I wanted to clean it and so I took the line the, the silicone tubing and I put it in about a cup of vinegar lucky for me I, I had like actually a, a really large container that uh, uh, a beaker that could fit two liters but I only filled it to about a quarter of the way of like pure vinegar. And I thought that while I was doing this, that I had turned off my automatic, automatic water change system off. So there is a button on my apex. Whenever I'm like, I'm not doing automatic water changes, I click it and it disables the entire system. I thought I clicked that. And I left, I left the, the line soaking in vinegar and I walked, uh, I walked away. Actually, I, I, had, I had left, uh, it was a weekend. I was taking, uh, uh, I forgot what I was doing. I was just running, running some errands. Uh, and then I got an alert from my apex saying that my tank, which has typically has a pH of about 8.3, is at 7.4. And immediately, right away, as soon as I got that alert, I knew exactly what was happening. I forgot to actually turn off my automatic water change system. And my system, the, the line that was supposed to take salt water uh, into my tank is now sitting in a cup of pure vinegar. And it's been dosing that cup of pure vinegar into my display. And, and as soon as I saw this, I, I actually, uh, uh, I didn't, I saw the alert and when I went to my apex, the system had already shot itself off because there's a couple of lines of code in there that I had as a fail safe, uh, that did stop me from dosing any additional, uh, vinegar, but the damage was already done. I had already essentially dosed about a cup, uh, or three quarters of a cup of vinegar into my tank. So, uh, not great. Obviously the, the pH dropped really quickly. Again, it went from, from 8.3 to 
to 7.4. 7.4 is like pretty drastic. It recovered super quick. So I, you know, my pH, uh, the pH sensor was, is really close to where I actually dose, uh, where the fresh water, uh, where my fresh water, my salt water, and, and in this case, the vinegar was being dosed. So the pH meter picked it up really quickly. Uh, but I don't think it actually, I don't think the entire tank's pH went to 7.4. I think maybe the sump pH went to, uh, went to 7.4, but it quickly recovered after I stopped dosing the vinegar. This had the un unintended consequence of messing up my alkalinity. Uh, so if you, if you know a little bit about your chemistry, you know that if you, if you wanna reduce alkalinity in your tank, you dose uh, acid. And so my alkalinity dropped and this took about two or three days for, for the alkalinity to kind of stabilize back at the levels uh, where, where they're at. Uh, I, was, I was super concerned about the corals. I, I was pre kind of prepared to wake up to uh, to a tank full of dead skeletons, but luckily it, th there doesn't seem to be any any major casualties so far. I mean, th there's a few colonies that look a little bit unhappy. Uh, you'll see from the top-down view, but overall, I, I feel like I, I dodged a bullet. Uh, a bullet. Uh, it could have been a lot worse. I, I could have filled up my uh, beaker with more acid, with more vinegar, and, and if I didn't have the, the bits of, uh, a couple of bits of code that realized that uh, if effectively what happened was that uh, yeah yeah so th there was like a couple of pH uh, checks that I have in in my apex that uh, would stop anything if the pH was getting too high or too low uh, so that that kind of saved the day so uh, that's uh, that's it in terms of how the tank is doing let's uh, let's check some of the SPS. All right, let's start our top-down tour. Here is uh, my tenuous. Uh, I think it's looking pretty happy. Uh, what we have here is, hmm, what is this one called again? I don't remember. All right, moving along. <laughs> Uh, the Slimer looking good. You'll notice on the new rocks, I'm, I'm still having a bit of algae issues uh, uh, with the new rocks. Um, I've souped up my uh, CO, uh, my cleanup crew. I added more snails. I added more crabs. Uh, I added an algae plenty. You know they're 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 doing a good job. I'm I'm not too concerned. I, I feel like I feel like whenever you put new rocks, uh, if you don't have coralline on the rocks, and uh, as would be the case if uh, they're dry rocks. Uh, uh, then you have the algae issues until the core line kind of takes over and I feel like the core line kind of creates a protective coat uh, that prevents algae. So we'll see. I'm, I'm kind of not, I'm not doing anything right now. I'm, I'm just uh, hoping that the COC will, uh, will uh, make all of that. Uh, yeah, you could uh, see a hermit crab right here. So I'm hoping that the cleanup crew will kind of take care of things. Uh, here we have uh, Jason Fox Jolt. It's coloring up a little bit. I am kind of increasing par over this area. I am uh, increasing the radion right underneath the spot by 1% in about weekly. So it is kind of coloring up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it, it still doesn't look like, uh, uh, the doesn't look as good as the amount of money that I paid for this tiny little frag, but you know, that's kind of, uh, that's SPS. So uh, what do we have here? Oh, this, yeah, this is looking, way this is looking like a hundred bucks which is uh not what i paid for it. i actually paid less for this but this is aura uh, hawkins uh ishinata and i think it's looking beautiful all right moving along here is uh what is this one called again uh golden jaw dropper i think uh looks green to me uh here is applejack I think kind of that looks a little bit pretty and you can see encrusting it's it's definitely loving uh loving uh, this spot here and then back there we're starting to get a bit of color in this is the atomic fireball which i think it's kind of a variant of uh of uh strawberry shortcake i mean you can see the yucky algae beside it here uh but yeah i'm, I'm, I'm not too concerned about that at the moment uh you know Funny enough, a year or two years ago, I would have freaked out about any kind of algae in the tank, but you know, it's not taking over. Um, you know, I could 
typically plug the really really long pieces and I'm hoping that the cleanup crew will just eventually uh, take care of uh, this uh, weeds these weeds all right what else do we have moving to the side uh, this is pink Cadillac let me zoom out a little bit there we go I'm shooting through the the porthole the Avast marine porthole I did a review on that a while ago uh, really handy kind of solves my rasses typically go up to the surface and uh, and they interfere with the uh, agitate the surface causing ripples and and using the porthole kind of solves that problem so the pink Cadillac is looking good the Cali tort is looking good and then behind it here is the bonsai looking pretty happy and healthy I think and then right in the front of the tank here is my uh, reef raft uh, pac-man mr pac-man uh it's uh yeah it goes really really well in in, in this spot i keep i keep fragging it and it keeps getting bigger uh, it's uh yeah it's it's a good problem to have i guess but uh you can see that it's kind of almost encroaching on the on the glass so i gotta get up my scissors and start trimming again here we have the shockaholic this is one colony that is not looking as happy i mean if you look at the colors of everything here you'll see that it they're not as kind of vibrant as as they were uh in the last video and i think part of this is just the vinegar accident and uh and the elk swings that uh ensued so uh i'm, I'm not too concerned i just hope that things recover uh here is uh uh, Marvin Martian, Marvin the Martian. It's a refraft drag. I uh, love the polyps on this one. Uh, here is one of uh, two uh, rainbow looms. Looking good. Uh, it's funny, this spot it gets a lot of light. It looks a lot brighter, but it doesn't grow as fast as the other spot where it's lower and it gets less light. You'll see in a sec. Here is, uh, I think, refraft pot of gold millie. Uh, looks green for now hopefully we'll color up soon uh, what do we have here uh, the Jason Fox TNT and Acropora uh, I really love this coral it's really pretty uh, then here we have major laser uh, I love the red polyps on the major laser and then we have the Jason Fox Fox flame uh, this one, I can't tell whether the the colors. I I, I do feel like this is another colony where uh, the colors kind of shifted a little bit uh, with the vinegar, uh, with the accidental vinegar uh, dose. Uh, here is uh, the, I'm trying to start another uh, frag of uh, the tenuous. Uh, here is the rainbow loom. You can see this colony gets less light. It's not as colorful, but it does grow a lot faster in, in my experience. And then uh, one of the stars of uh, the tank, my electric Mayaji tort. Let's see if I could get the better exposure a little bit better here. Maybe from this angle. Uh, I think it's really pretty. And then here is the, <laughs> the remnant of my massive blueberry wine colony. So I cut it back to this tiny frag and I moved it to the side. And you, you could see, again, we have algae problem here on the new rock that I introduced. So uh, I, I think it's just kind of par for the course. Um, again, I'm not going to do anything drastic. Uh, I'm hoping that the cleanup crew will catch up. And as the rocks mature, like, you know, these rocks, you could see that yeah, you, all the algae bits are in areas where uh, there isn't a lot of coralline. So I think as the rocks kind of mature, they're going to... Uh, Put, uh, I'm gonna have less algae, uh, uh, less gr uh, green hair algae and, and more coralline. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please uh, uh, do hit that subscribe button and, uh, and uh, hit the alert so that way you're uh, on top of any new videos I release. Uh, I am planning on doing a reef science video. I know I haven't done one uh, in a while and uh, there's actually been some really cool research on uh, how bacteria contribute to coral health. So I'm, I'm planning to do a video on that soon. And uh, I'll continue, obviously, with updating you on uh, how, my how my tank is uh, progressing. Thanks so much for watching and see you soon. Bye.